Hey Wes here, thanks for joining me today and today I am working on the problem of turning red iron oxide paint black. That's how Cibola Whiteware works, that's how Membrus Pottery works. You get a nice black on white image but it starts off with a red iron oxide paint. And there's a number of people working on this, uh, including myself, and I've had very little success. I did paint this pot. It started off with red iron oxide paint, and I successfully fired it. And the blacks are nice and black. The whites are kind of on the gray side, but I call this a success. And I've not even come close to this in any other case. And I have wondered, well, maybe it has to do with the paint recipe. What goes into the paint, if anything, besides iron? Well, we know it's probably got clay to get it all to stick. Uh, but beyond that, is there anything else? And so I have taken this pot. This was another failed experiment. It's supposed to have turned black. It didn't. Plus, it also broke. Uh, but I have, have eight different recipes. The simplest one just being iron oxide and clay uh, and to see if there is any difference. So I'm going to go outside and try and get this in a reduced environment, get these colors to turn black. I don't know if I can be successful in that, uh, but let's give it a try and so let's go get started. Nice and black. Okay, let's see what uh, the end result is. This is cool to the touch, so it shouldn't be a problem, and hopefully the red paint is black. And interesting. This is touchable. Well, what did we find out here? And with all experiments, it seems to answer some questions and raises some other ones. And had some success, uh, but it was mixed. Uh, first of all, as you can see, the reduction did not work. The blacks did not stay black. However, coming out of the fire, they looked fairly black. I saw some hint of red, uh, but they were reasonably black when they went into that stainless steel kettle. So the reduction itself didn't work very well. And the big question I wanted to know was, does the paint recipe matter? And I think it matters a little, but maybe not a lot. And you can see number two here is darker than the others. And I'll get into that here in just a little bit. But a recipe isn't going to save a bad reduction. Uh, now, I think I need to refire this. One question I have is maybe putting more charcoal in the pot. I had some live charcoal in the, in the bottom of the pot, but maybe more of that would make a difference. Also, the, the lid on the pot fits pretty well, but it doesn't screw on. So the sense I get is a little bit of oxygen in the reduction process will really mess things up. So you're I think you probably really have to cut out uh, that oxygen all of the way. Uh, so this uh, had a temperature of uh, roughly 800 degrees total. I came out with closer to 700 Celsius. Uh, so the temperature coming up is a little bit unclear. Don't know about that. Didn't test it. So let's look at these individual recipes and see, especially with number two, why that seems to be a little bit different than the others. All right, let's walk through this a little bit. Uh, I'm just gonna go through these as quickly as I can. Number one, I used iron oxide. This was a commercial iron oxide. I wanted to kind of standardize things. Three parts of iron oxide, one part clay. Uh, I'm going to come back to number two because this is the one that is a little bit different and may make some difference. Uh, number three, I, add, I had iron oxide 
some borax, I thought that might help, uh, and also some clay. Uh, with number four, this was iron oxide, some clay, and some beeweed. Not really, really very much difference. Uh, number five, this was a, a field sample of hematite. This is from the Maori mine, which is an abandoned mine down in southern Arizona. So this is the source of the hematite. So whether it is commercial iron oxide or comes from the field like this, I couldn't see much difference with that. And then there's some clay that is added to that as well. Same way with number six here. This is another piece of iron oxide or hematite uh, from the field, came from New Mexico. Uh, and I think actually that's what all this red is for the most part. All of my records are not clear about that. Uh, again, doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference where that a hematite or iron oxide is coming from. Number seven is a mix of several different things that I was using on another project. Doesn't seem to make much difference. Number eight looks slightly darker, particularly over here, and that has iron oxide, some copper carbonate, which is used in other mineral paints sometimes, and some clay. So that makes maybe some difference. So let's jump back to number two. This has some manganese dioxide in it. So it's one part of manganese dioxide, three parts of iron oxide, and then one part of clay. So that does seem to make a difference. And there I found one article where they did sampling, scientific sampling of uh, paint recipes and found that some of these have... Uh, manganese dioxide in them. So that does seem to make some difference, but it still doesn't, it's not enough to save a bad reduction. But it, it doesn't seem to be inappropriate, according to the record, to actually use a little bit of manganese dioxide, and it, it looks like it could help. Well, the journey continues. Uh, questions answered, questions raised. Uh, so thanks for coming along. If you like this video and others, please thumbs up and uh, subscriptions, all those things, comments are great. Uh, thank you for all of that. And until next time, this is Wes wishing you health, happiness, peace, and love. Take care. Bye-bye.